Chapter one, lesson six, so putting perms and comms together, kind of paying attention to the little differences. So here's a review of what we've covered so far. I mean, we've already covered quite a bit of information already in the you know, short week with starting. So we got fundamental accounts principles. So remember multiplying number of ways times number of ways per whatever um, space, you could say, or <laughs> I can't think of the, world, the word, but A times B times C to get your number of different ways. Your factorial notations, just kind of coming down. Essentially, n factorial is 7 times 6 times 5, et cetera, all the way down to 1. Number permutation, there's your permutations formula. Permutations repetitions, so n over a, b, and c factorial. a, b, and c represent repetitions of letters or repetition of colors or whatever they're talking about re repeating. Number of combinations, remember combinations is um, order doesn't matter, and so we end up dividing out the r, okay, because the order doesn't matter. And the formula is a little bit different, but very similar. Okay, n over n minus r, n over n minus r, just have the r factorial is the only difference. Okay, so just kind of a review of what we talked about so far. So let's kind of look at a couple of these examples here. Okay, so how many arrangements for the word poppies can be made under each of the following conditions without any restrictions? So how many arrangements of poppies, just straight, no restrictions? Now, I'm going to say this one more time, and I, I said this to Langley the other day. Repetitions is not a restriction, but they are something you have to account for separately. So they don't, they're not saying start with a P, that's a restriction. But when I say poppies, there's three P's. That's a repetition that we have to account for regardless of a restriction, okay? So when it says no restriction, that does not mean ignore repetitions, is my point. Okay, do you guys understand what I'm saying? So how many letters we got? Seven. And we're repeating just the P, right? It's simply seven factorial over three factorial. 7 for 7 letters, 3 because the P is repeated 3 times. So that gives us 840 arrangements of poppies. Okay. If each arrangement begins with P, okay, so let's watch how this changes things a little bit. So that just means we know we're having a P here, and that's just locked in. So now we have 6 spaces left. Right? 6 spaces left. And of those letters, is there repetition in there? Yes. yes. And so this now would be 6 factorial over 2 factorial. Okay, the first P is locked in. We don't care about switching the, the three P's around because we're just locking this P in. It doesn't matter. Like some people get confused. They're like, well, what if the P switch? Well, it doesn't matter because it's still the same thing. So we actually don't count that anyways, right? Because that would be a repetition. So it's just 6 factorial over 2 factorial. So then we have. 360 is this one. Okay, if the first two letters are P, so now we're doing both P's here, locked in. One, two, three, four, five. What about this one? What would you do here? Simply five factorial, because everything in here is different now. We don't have any repetitions. And again, we don't care about the P's, because if I switch them, it doesn't matter. It's repetition, anyways. So if you want to do, well, I'm going to do this 2 factorial. OK, we better divide by 2 factorial, which is 1, and you're wasting your time. OK, why it's 1 is because they're repetition anyways. So 5 factorial here, you get what, 20, 60, 120? OK, so 120 for that one. And if all p's are to be together, so you're keeping your p's clumped. So that means you have like one space, 1, 2, 3 of p's, 1, 2, 3, 4. So are we starting with three P's or just together? So that means we're doing what? Five again, yep. Five, just five. We don't care about, again, that's a good point. Three factorial, but if I do that, I have to divide out the repetition of it, so it's silly. Because the three P's is not different however I shuffle them, right? It's going to be three P's. So to your point, I, that's, I understand what you're saying, but then you have to divide out the repetition so it's a pointless. So when they're all the same thing, you don't have to do that. If it wasn't, if it was POP, then it would be 3 over 2 factorial. Or if it was all different, just be 3 factorial, yes. Okay. <sighs> okay, so if the first letter is P and the next one is not P, so now they're kind of giving you something, kind of two restrictions to keep into account. So we know the first letter is P, so we're just locking this in. So we know we have six letters left. Okay, and we know this can't be a P. So of the six left, how many possible here? Four. Okay, so you put a four there. Okay, 
And then it simply is going to go, how many is left now? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Now, so essentially it's 5 factorial. But then you have to ask yourself, is there any opportunities for repetitions? How many p's are in here? So it's over 2 factorial. Okay, it's got that one little hiccup of the 4. It just can't be a p. Okay, and then 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. So that calculates to be 240. Okay. It's a really good kind of combo there of things. Okay. All right. All right, class consists of five girls, seven boys. Committees to be formed consisting of two girls and three boys. Determine number way a teacher can choose the committee if there's no further restrictions. So if we just need, how many girls did say of two? So five C2 times seven C3. Okay, there's no restrictions. We don't care about order, we're just selecting them. If you do that multiplication, you get 350. So Johnny is the principal son. He has to be on the committee. So that means your committee of five okay, is a locked in boy. So that means we have a boy locked in. So now we need to change our boy multiplier from seven to six. And we only want two boys now. And then our girls stay the same. Six, uh, sorry, five C3 with only five girls. Okay, and that gives me 150. Okay, that's why it's a little bit tricky here. We're going to talk about two different little ways of doing it, but the twins, Peter and Paul, cannot be on the committee. So, like, cannot both be on the committee, excuse me. So that means that only one can be on it. Okay, so how can we account for this situation? What are the, what are the so what's the only thing we don't want? Peter and Paul together. So how many situations are there in which they're not, that, that is not that? Okay, um, you're doing the math for it. I'm just asking a simple question of if, if we're saying the one thing we want is we don't want Peter and Paul in the committee together, tell me how many different things there are that can happen that isn't that. So like Peter's on by himself, Paul's on by himself, neither's on himself. That's the three I was trying to tell you. There's three things that are okay. All right, so let's find those three things. Then we're going to do what you did second, okay? So Jaden kind of talked about, he's doing the subtraction. We'll do that second. Okay, so we want to do Paul on, Peter on, and then neither on. I'm going to figure out what that would be. So if we do Peter only, or sorry, Paul only, what would that combination for the boys be? Close. So she said the same before, so she took one out just like the principal son, but there's a problem with that. If you just take one out, what's... Right, because this principal son, we just took him out, right? When we take Paul out and we say he's in, we have to take Peter out as well and not count him. Because if we leave Peter in the selection, you could get Peter and they'd both be on. So Paul by himself would be 5C2. Okay, Paul's on. We left Peter out and the other five guys, okay? So 5C2, and then the girls stay the same. The girl is still your 5C2. Okay, that's gonna be the same for Peter. 5C2, 5C2. Okay, so this one right here, for, there's 100 ways to have just Paul. There's 100 ways to just have Peter. And then to have neither, what would that one be? be 5c2 still right it's still 5c2 that's kind of coincidence but you're taking them both out okay and then the girls would be uh, still the same yes 5c2 yes hold on 5c3 
Sorry, the 5C2 is the girls. 5C3 is the boys, my bad. So it's still not 5C2, sorry. So if neither of them are out, we're gonna select three boys out of five. It was backwards in my notes, sorry. 5C3 selects th uh, is selecting three boys that is not Peter and Paul. Okay, 5C2 is the girl still. So I don't know why it's that reverse on us. That's the boy selection, that's the girl selection, sorry. And so that becomes also 100. And so there's 300 ways for Peter and Paul to not be on there together. Okay. So then we're going to do is we're going to go to Jaden what he said. He said you can find the total ways. It's just another way of doing it. Total ways subtract Peter and Paul together. Okay. So what's the total ways of selecting the committee? Right, it's this guy right here, right? This is the total way. Which is 350. There's 350 total ways to put all this stuff together. Okay? What is the ways of the, uh, what's the combination that represent Peter and Paul together? Exactly, you take them out of the boys, and so that means the we only need to get one boy, right? So it would be 5C1, because Peter and Paul we put in, so we're down to five boys. We're choosing one boy besides Peter and Paul, and then the girl stays the same. And that gives you 50, and so you get 300 again, okay? All right, I see some wheels turn. Any questions? Okay, so it's kind of just like, you know, taking things out versus putting things in, keeping your numbers lined up so you're making sure you're getting the right committee number. Okay. Uh, why did you, why is there only one boy selected instead of two alternatives? Yeah, because this time Peter and Paul are two boys on. So one, two, we only have one more spot for a boy, right? And then we have two spots for girls. And that's what the two is. So Peter and Paul are already on. We need three people. One plus two, there's my three people I'm taking. Is that good? Anything else? Okay, let's finish this up here. All right, so use the following information to answer the next example. J oh, yeah. Don't particularly like this example, but we'll try it. Okay, <laughs> so David, Steve, and Helen were trying to answer the following homework question. Students in the school band have uh, practiced five popular six classical music compositions. Uh, for the school concert, they will choose a program consisting of three popular, two classical compositions. If the order of the composition matters, determine the number of different programs which can be presented. The students' answers were shown below. So this is what they thought the answer would be to figure this out. 11P5, 5P3, 6P2, or 5C3 and 6C2. Each student was convinced their answers were correct and asked their teacher to check their work. The teacher asked the students to write their answers on the board and asked the class to discuss the merits of each answer. All right, so if we think about what they're saying, if possible, discuss the merits of each. Okay, so like with what is the good and bad of each answer? So whoever wants to start. So what's wrong with Dave? Janet, I'm summarizing what you said, but Helen selects the compositions correctly but didn't order them essentially. So you're right. She selected the three popular and the two classicals correctly, but she didn't order them. It's a lot like your guys' um, smile frog question that some of you guys did on the show beat. Okay, so we'll talk about that as well after this. Okay? Yeah, a lot of you guys had the, the meat of it. You just missed one little thing. Okay, what's wrong with David's? Right, so he's not selecting the correct amount of each. Okay, so he is mixing five um, musicals, 
but not in the 3, 2 format. Because it tells you the set amount that you want. Okay, and then what's wrong with Stevens? His is close, but it's not quite right either. So, right. So what happens with Stevens is, is his multiplier is keeping them uh, all three classical and two popular together, which is not right. So he is mixing them, but he's mixing them in a group. That's his problem. Because 5P3, that means his permutation of playing three is just that group of three. So he's just mixing them in like that, like not, um, it could be any order. So, right, but he, the, it doesn't say that classical and uh, popular can't be interwoven. And his are all going to go classical. But you're right, his classicals will be mixed and his populars will be mixed. But they won't um, be mixed with each other. Yeah, Helen's the start, and this is where all of you guys killed it on your Shobi, and you missed the last part we're going to talk about to finish Helen's. Helen's is the best start. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so Steven is mixing popular and classical within their group. Their group only. Okay, good. I just don't like saying popular, so I don't like expression. It sounds weird. Okay. So, and I think once we do this on the next page here, we're going to write actually how to do it. Um, when it comes to this kind of stuff, guys, you need to figure out, because here it is. When I give you, if when you have a list of popular and a list of classical, does it matter how you choose them? No. So choosing them is a combination, because you're just saying, I want these three songs. Then we're going to use our strategy to mix them. And that's what you guys mess up with on the Smile and Frog. You take two letters from each of the, those words. Okay, That's how many ways to get those two letters. Well, how do you mix four letters? Four factorial. Right? So that's how you mix. So I'll show you. Look at this question here. So the correct way, I told you Helen was the right start. So 5C3, okay, and then 6C2. This gives you five songs. You just have five songs, right? That gives you the ways to get five songs. Okay? Well, if we have five songs, how do we mix them into an order? Five factorial. That's the only thing you guys are missing on your Shobi, and that's the difference of this question. So you use combinations to select the songs, five factorial to mix the songs, the total ways you can mix them. Five factorial, yeah. What do you mean by add in? But do you mean do you mean add it like actually addition? Right. Okay, because um, this is how many ways you can mix. This is how many ways you can select. So it's always ways times ways. Like we add. If it was um, different, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to add. It, when you're talking about at least and at most, and there's different situations of or, then you add. Like, you add when there's different um, restrictions, essentially. Like, if I can have three, four, and five, I need to add three, four, and five. This is one way, actually, so we're just figuring out the total. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so we'll stop there for the video.